Jupyter Notebook is a popular open source web application that allows you to create and share documents containing live code, equations, visualizations, and explanatory text. In this crash course, I will introduce you to basic concepts and features of Jupyter Notebook. So let's get started. First of all, open your Microsoft Edge, Chrome, or any other browser and go to Anaconda, start the Anaconda download, and you can just click on this button or let me just click on this page so that we can how to go to download from website now once anaconda.com is open as you can see here as it is open you will see this page and you can just click on download and right away the download will start as you can see it is 787 mb so it will take quite some time so as you can see here our anaconda is downloaded so now you can click on open file or go to the folder where it is downloaded and just double click on it so once this is open you will see something like this click on next click on I agree click on just me or all users now if you click on just me this will only be visible to the user that currently you are logged in as so right now I'm logged in as Vijay Shrestha so it will only be available for Vijay Shrestha okay so but if you want it to be available to all the users click on all users right now I'll just install it for me click on next and this is where Anaconda will be installed if you want you can change the directory hit next and you can leave all these three options unchecked and click on install so as you can see here it is showing completed now you can click on next click on next again uncheck this and uncheck this also and hit finish all right guys now our anaconda is completely installed now press on windows button and type anaconda so you will see these two things here the so anaconda prompt is using command line and anaconda navigator is using gui so click on anaconda navigator we will open up command prompt and it will take some time to install and initialize for the first time so be patient with this so now you can see anaconda navigator is open and it is still processing here now you can see a bunch of options here as you can see like jupyter lab notebook and all this good stuff our anaconda is installed and now we are successfully open in our anaconda navigator in your anaconda navigator you will see a lot of other packages and other softwares now to install and open jupyter notebook you just need to click on this launch in this jupyter notebook section click on launch it will take some time and launch jupyter notebook for you and once your jupyter notebook is open you will see a bunch of folders here now you can go inside any of these folders and create Jupyter Notebook file or you can create the file here itself. In here, you will see options like files, running, clusters, upload and new. Running tab will show you all the running notebooks that we have. Clusters is for parallel computing and we do not need to go into clusters right now. If you want to know more about clusters, let me know in the comments below. But this is an advanced topic, so you guys really want to know, let me know and I'll create a tutorial on this too okay now let's go back to files now what to do here initially you will want to create a new file so you can just click on new and then choose a kernel now let's see what a kernel is first of all instead of directly jumping into kernel let's explore around here and let's say we want to create the new file inside the documents folder okay now if you already have something that you want to delete you can just click on this and click delete Now let's create a new file. When you create a new Jupyter Notebook file, you need to choose which kernel to use. Kernel is basically which Python version to use or if you are familiar with virtual environment, this is something like that. Uh, I'm seeing these two things here, Python 3 and VNV LSTM. If you are freshly installed, you might be seeing only one thing that is the global Python version installed in your system. Now, I had created a virtual environment and added it as a kernel. So that's why this is available. But for now, let's choose the default one that is available in your system 2, that should be available in your system 2, and click on Python 3, and your new notebook will be opening up with Python 3 as the kernel. Now, this is the editor panel or editor view. Now you'll see a lot of options here, file, edit view, insert cell, and all these things. And we will see what all these are. Let's just do the basic mandatory print, hello world here now we just click on this and as you can see hello world is printed 
now we will not always use these buttons we will use shortcuts that i that's how i usually do so i will tell you shortcuts that will make your process a lot faster so let's say you want to print how are you now last time we clicked on this but now what you can do is press ctrl plus enter and as you can see how are you is printing okay now another way to do this is going to cell and choose run cells run cells and selected cells below and run cell and insert below and as you can see the shortcuts are also present here what is a cell this is a cell in jupyter cells are the building block of jupyter notebook they can either contain code or they can contain text right now they only contain code now let's see how we can add text to jupyter cells we press ctrl enter and the cell is executed now what if you want to create a new cell below it to do that you can click on plus or you can click on you can click b in both cases you can add new cells but what if you want to run and then add a new cell automatically right so let's say i am fine now if you press b and this cell is selected so it's typing b you need to deselect the cell escape and you can click on this or press b now as you can see i am fine is not printed it just added new cell so how to execute this cell and then add a new cell to do that you can press alt and enter now when you press alt and enter this cell is executed and a new cell is added below it what if you want to execute it let's say i am also good now what if you want to execute it and instead of adding a new cell you just want to go to this cell to do that you can press shift and enter now this cell is executed and you are moved to the cell below it so these are cells as you can know this is first cell this is another cell this is another cell all these are cells now we have added code to it now let's see how we can add markdown or text to cell and now we have just added code to our cells cells can also contain markdown that will have capabilities like adding heading bold text italic text and all that good stuff so you can explain your code to change the type of a cell to markdown you can go to cell cell type and click on markdown now, as you can see in markdown cell you will not have this icon so what is the difference between a normal cell and a markdown cell if i type hash jupyter lab or jupyter notebook tutorial here and i press ctrl enter it is becoming a heading now this is not a code this is not executed it just became a title now to go to the cells above it this is not looking good i want to delete all these cells so what i can do is just use my arrow keys to go to these cells and if I hit enter, as you can see, the cell is selected. I am green. Now, whatever I do, will be done inside the cell. To deselect the cell, you can press escape or you can just click anywhere outside of the cell. Now, to delete the cell, you just press D two times. Double D, double D again, double D, double D, double D. So, now we are clean. We just have Jupyter Notebook Tutorial in a markdown cell. Now, going below the cell and running the cell is the same thing. So, if I press shift enter again i go below it and now i'm in another cell now in this cell also by default the cell type is as you can see here because of this icon this is a code so i can press escape and press m and now this becomes a markdown cell so let's write something this is a jupyter notebook tutorial all right now again press shift enter and this is this is just a text in this one if I double click, as you can see, we have one hash. Now, what's two hash going to do? Let's say cells. And now, again, as you can see, this is not a markdown cell. This is this will be treated as Python code. So to change that, press escape and press M. Now this is converted to markdown cell. Again, I'll now press shift enter. Here, let's press control enter. So as you can see, this is also a title, but this is a little bit smaller than this one. So basically, one hash means heading, two hash means h2 or subheading as, as if you're familiar with HTML, this can be considered as h2. Now here again, I'll, I'll write this is tutorial about cells. Now again, I can see this icon, so I'll press escape and press M and I'll go to control enter, control enter here, control enter here. Now this becomes a pretty well looking document. After this, you can have whatever you want, press enter, Press shift enter now you can write 
exit from a cell press control enter and now this is a python code so this is a markdown cell this is a markdown cell this is a markdown cell and this is a code cell okay so now we are done with cells let's move on now let's see how we can save notebooks and load different notebooks first let's add a little more line of code here so i'll press shift and enter a equals to 20 b equals to 40 c equals to a plus b again i'll execute and go to a new line i'll print c so 60 is printed now let's say we have done a lot of things we have experimented and now we want to save this go to file and tick save as and you it will show the directory after that you just need to type the name my first art is saved what you can do now is you can just click on this file and you can click on this but but wait first but first go to our main documents here and if i go to this running thing here you will see this notebook is running so now you can shut down from here also but I'll not do that. I'll just click on file and I'll say close and halt. So now we are moved back to our main Jupyter main homepage. And now, as you can see, there is nothing in running. I can go to files and I can see my first notebook here. So let me delete this again. And now I can also log out. That will log me out from the current session. Let's click on log out. And now I can go to login page again. If you don't remember the password or you have not set a password, you don't need to worry. You can just go to your command line where you had actually started your Jupyter Notebook. This will be open. Now what you need to do is scroll up where it has the message like Jupyter Notebook is running at this. So you just hold control and this underline will come and click on this and Jupyter Notebook will open again. If you click on quit, your server will stop and you will not be able to start Jupyter again unless you start the server again. Okay, now how to just open our file that we had created. So go to documents and click on this. Now our notebook is loading up. So this is our notebook. If I go back to our homepage again and you will see this green thing here because it is running right now. And if I click on running, I'll see the documents here. And now let's say we have a lot of cells here and instead of doing it one by one instead of running the cells one by one i want to run it all at once so what do i do i go to cell and i click run all so all the cells are rerun now you have basic idea of how to create a new notebook how to write code and how to write markdown and how to save and how to open files in jupyter notebook let me tell you that there are a lot of other features in jupyter notebook like it allows you to display and plot data using libraries like numpy pandas matplotlib and more it also allows you to use a lot of magic functions that provide functionalities like timing debugging and system commands so if you want to learn more let me know in the comment section below for the basics i think we have covered how to create new notebooks how to write code what are cells and a few shortcuts that will increase your productivity if you have questions let me know in the section below